Gold has been sought after since the beginning of human history. In these troubled times, it's seen as a safe investment. But as demand for this treasured metal grows, so too do the dangers to miners and the environment. Here's our story. Gold. At 1,064 degrees centigrade, it's a liquid poured and formed into bars of precious metal. Under this intense heat, the molten gold separates from the denser impurities, leaving an ingot of pure, solid gold. At current prices, this ingot goes for 350,000 US dollars. Here, in the sizzling and sweltering heat of the rainforest, men in the Caribbean country of Guyana gamble everything searching for bits of gold. They're looking to share in the more than 200 million US dollars that Guyana took in as revenue from gold last year. Despite its value, this kind of work is bringing huge risks to miners and the environment. Charles Daniels was hit hard by it. Nobody there really knew what was causing me to be down. Sometimes I feel good today, tomorrow I feel bad. Charles started prospecting for gold when he was just a teenager. About four years ago, Charles noticed his hands began to tremble softly. He thought it was nothing, but over time the shaking became worse. It got to the point where he could no longer even hold a hammer. They advised me to go to Georgetown and see if they could find anything. I had to wait for two weeks. The diagnosis, mercury poisoning. Charles blames one thing for his illness. The gold work. I never took precautions. Mercury is used to separate gold flakes from silt during the mining process. It can be a fast and effective tool, but if handled carelessly, it can be poisonous. Breathing in mercury vapors causes dizziness and damages the nervous system. Exposure over a long time could cause death. But it is especially hazardous for infants and pregnant women and can lead to birth defects. Mercury has been used in our country for a long time. Dr. Leslie Ramsamy, Guyana's Minister of Health. I am certain that it has led to various neurological and other chronic conditions. Guyana isn't the only country grappling with the dangers of mercury. According to a United Nations report, an estimated 100 million people may be facing health problems from mercury use in mining. Brenda Kukuk is environmental engineer and program officer with the United Nations Environment Program, UNEP. She says UNEP's governing council is seeking a global agreement to monitor the use of mercury. The treaty is set to reduce international trade on mercury and to reduce emissions of mercury. So banning uh, mercury is a, is a strong term, but certainly many governments have already taken measures in this direction. For example, the United States and the European Union. To minimize the risks of mercury to its people and the environment, the government of Guyana enacted new laws the Mining Amendment Regulations of 2005. Now miners are required to use gloves and masks when handling mercury. Mining officers visit sites every three months. If caught committing violations, miners are slapped with steep fines and loss of livelihood. But some miners don't believe that mercury is harmful. Ronald Remy is one of them. He has been mining for more than 40 years in Madia, a mining town just 300 kilometers from Guyana's capital, Georgetown. I've been using mercury from 1960 until now. I've never had any effects from it. If mercury was something against people's health, three-quarters of these people would have been dead by now. 
Although these safeguards will protect miners like Remy from getting sick, he opposes the new measures, saying it will put him out of a job. It's every day. Every day they are putting pressure on small-scale miners. There is nothing to do in Maria but mining. If they put pressure on us and the small-scale miners cannot work, what are we going to do? For years, miners in Guyana operated without any respect for human health or the environment, says Noel Ramkaran, general manager of Sahadio Mining Company. Well, before then, we normally used to put the gold just in, like, in the, into the pans and burn it and the mercury, you know, and that is not healthy, that wasn't healthy at all, you know. The open burning accelerates the release of high levels of mercury vapor into the atmosphere, far beyond the boundaries of the mines. It escaped into the groundwater, polluting waterways and contaminating fish. Because when we release these things into the environment, in the water, and so it gets into the food chain, and people who never work with them are getting exposed. But now that's changing. As part of the new rules, gold amalgam is now sealed in a retort or metal container and heated with a blowtorch to evaporate mercury, leaving only gold. The mercury vapor is diverted into a bowl of water where it can't escape and settles to the bottom where it returns to its original liquid state. More people are taking precautions but in spite of the regulation, in spite of education and awareness, there are still too many people that are exposing themselves to the dangers of mercury. And miners like Remy will have to abide by the new regulations. But for Charles, whose condition has become so debilitating that he can no longer fend for himself, it's too late. Today I can't do anything. I just sit and walk, but not too much walking because of my illness.